All right, everybody. Hello. Welcome to week eight. Hey, I'm just going to give you, for our direct instruction this week, I'm going to give you just a few tips on um, some of the things that you're going to see in the module for the week. I think that's where you guys will probably need the most help. Um, so I'm going to do just like a minute here showing you where I'm going, and then I'm going to cut to some um, recordings from my iPads because I actually went through and did this on my iPad so that it looks exactly like what yours is um, looking at, especially since most of you guys are working on your iPad. Um, so I'm, I just logged into my Concord, my STEM resource finder. Um, you should still see all of your plate tectonics material showing up here. Um, and then on the very bottom now, you should see this Hurricane Module V2. Um, so remember, you're going to just run by yourself. It should be um, good to go because you guys worked with it last week. But then once you get into here, you guys this week are going to do Hurricane Strength, number activity number three, and then Hurricane Hazards and Impacts, activity number four. Um, so I'm going to click into activity three here, and then I'm actually going to cut out for a second, um, and then I will be back in just a minute um, using the using my iPad um, to show you guys a few tips that will help you this week. Okay, guys, I'm going to give you just a few quick tips on a few pages in our activity this week. So the first one here, I'm on activity three, page number two. Um, you are going to have to go back to that Maps Overlays tab, and I just want to show you how to do that again if you forgot. So if you look, it says, in order to investigate sea surface temperature in the model, click the Maps Overlays tab and then click Sea Surface Temperature. Click the orange Season button at the bottom to change seasons from winter to spring to summer to fall. So I just want to show you, um, remember to do this. Down here in the bottom right corner, there's these four arrows pointing out. When you touch that, it's going to open up the map. And then you have your two options here, base overlays or map overlays. I'm going to go to map overlays, make sure I turn on my sea surface temperature. Um, and then I can do this one of two ways. I can even choose, I can either choose to click through this orange seasons button in this tab, or I can hit the X up here in the top left. It brings me back to the little bit smaller version of it. And then I can click through this way. Okay, so either way you want to do it. Okay, so the second tip I'm going to give to you, I am now in activity three, page three. Um, and it's asking you, it says that Hurricane Explorer includes maps of average sea surface temperatures in each season, winter, spring, summer, and fall. Use the model to examine which seasons are more or less likely to produce hurricanes that reach the east coast of North America. As you experiment with the model, see if you can identify which seasons are more likely to have strong hurricanes. So I just want to go through the um, model again with you and show you, remember, before you hit play, before you start anything, you can touch and you can move these high and low pressure systems and you can change the intensity of them. Um, so remember, you can do that. You have to do it before. Um, I'm going to hit start. Um, the other thing, whoop, there we go, I'm going to run it. Um, the other thing that I want to make sure that you guys are remembering is as you watch this hurricane moving, um, you can pay attention to what color it is and what color the line is. So remember, these colors down here in the bottom right correspond to how intense or how strong the winds of the hurricane are. So if you look here, it's going from it was white, which is a tropical storm. It turned into a yellow, a little bit lighter of a yellow, which was a category one. And then you can see here as it's getting up into South America and Cuba um, that it's changing. So we're now it's a category four. It also says it on the little hurricane as it's moving. So I just want to point out to you when you're answering these questions, it asks you about like the strength of the storm. Um, and so just pay attention to that color on the line that it's making. Okay, you guys, next one, I am on page four of activity three. Um, I just want to explain this graph to you for just a minute. Um, if you look at this, the line going down the center at zero, that's supposed to represent the average temperatures between 1951 and 1980. So they went through all those years, took that data, calculated out what the average temperature was. And then if you look here, this is looking at global ocean temperatures um, from January through December of the years 1880 down here on the left all the way, whoops, all the way up to 2010 over here on the right. So any year where you see a blue bar going down, that shows you that the temperature of that year, so like in 1910, if you look at 1910, um, the average temperature was between negative 0.4 and negative 0.5, meaning it was negative 0.4 to negative 0.4, or I'm sorry, to point negative 0.5 degrees Celsius colder than average. 
And then if you look here, like starting in 1980, you have this big string of red bars. So that means in the period from 1980 to 2010, the average temperatures are going up, 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 all the way to the end of the graph here. Our final temperature um, is about 1.4 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than average. All right, everyone, and just a few tips here for activity four. So you can see here I'm in activity four. Remember, you have this menu button where you can choose your different activities, but I'm in activity four on page three. Um, the first thing I want to tell you about activity four, you guys, is a lot of the questions are asking you to look at a picture, look at a graph, look at something, and interpret it the best way you can. So again, just like last week, remember, if you are, if it's asking you a question about what are some ways that you think or what do you think is going to happen, um, there are no right or wrong answers. Just look at the picture, do the best you can with what you know, and answer those, okay? So that's kind of what's going on in, in number six and seven here. Um, it's asking you to look at like the areas of rainfall and talk about some of the ways that this could impact a community, okay? Um, then I'm going to skip ahead now to page number four. One thing I wanted to show you and just point out to you on page number four, again, you guys, just make sure you're reading what it says. This first part of page four is talking about something called storm surge, um, which is basically um, extra water being pushed up into an area of land, like especially on a coastal city. But what I want to point out when you're watching this video, I just want to make sure that you see on the bottom here, there's this orange line that's moving across to the right. As the orange line moves to the right, the further it gets, the stronger the storm is. So I want to just make sure you saw that because that's going to really help you answering those questions below. So you can see as the storm is getting stronger and stronger, that storm surge, the amount of water that's coming up on the land is getting more, getting higher. Okay, um, and then there's one more video here. You guys can handle that one. Let me know if you have questions. But then the last thing I want to do is just um, show you this last page there. It goes from questions 12 all the way to question 17. Um, and I just want to show you a little bit more with uh, the model because it asks you to do a lot with the model. So number one, it says we're going to look at how do hurricanes impact people and the environment. Um, and you're going to look at wind, rain, storm surge. You're going to look at population. Um, so you're going to look at a couple different things. And I just want to make sure you're okay going back and forth between them. So it says, start by setting the pressure system to produce a hurricane that makes landfall in the United States. So with this one, you guys, you literally don't have to do anything. Um, remember, you can move those pressure systems around if you want to. Um, but if you want a hurricane that's making landfall in the U.S., you do not have to move the pressure systems at all. We should see as this hurricane comes down here now on the southeast coast and moves up, it's eventually going to make landfall right here. Um, as it passes kind of close to New York. So remember, landfall just means it, it crosses over land. Um, so that part, you don't have to do anything. Um, question 12 says, take a snapshot, circle the location where the hurricane makes landfall for the first time. The only thing I will remind you here, you guys, is the snapshot is going to take a snapshot, a picture of whatever is currently showing in the model. So if I take a snapshot right now, it's going to show the whole thing because I haven't zoomed into any area, which I could do, and then I could circle my landfall up here. Um, you could also, if you wanted to, zoom in a little bit so it's easier to see. And then if I take a snapshot, it's going to show now that zoomed in area where I am. And then I could also do it this way and circle it like that. Okay, so either way is good for you um, or whatever way works for you. Um, what I do want to show you is just down here. So 14, 16, and 17 are asking you to turn on some different overlays, turn on some different base maps, um, and then zoom in and take some pictures. So I want to make sure, just show you one more time how we're doing that. So 14 says turn on the precipitation overlay. So you can leave what you have here. You don't have to run the model again, but remember you hit those arrows to bring you to this screen. So you have base maps and you have map overlays. I will show you the map overlay. It was asking you about precipitation, and there you go. So one thing I do want to just remind you guys is that this key only shows up in this screen, in this view of the model. Um, so make sure you take a peek at that key. It looks to me, if we're looking at those colors closely, the greens and blues are only one to three inches of precipitation. Um, the darkest we get is maybe this 10 to 12 inches. It looks like possibly up here, um, there's a little, I don't know if you guys can see it if I zoom in, there's a little area of purple. Um, so, whoops. I got to turn it back on for you, sorry. Um, there's a little area of maybe purple, so possibly some 14 inches there. Okay, so that's the precipitation. So you can do that. Come back here, take a snapshot, look for the, look for the darkest colors. 
Okay, when you go into 16 and 17, you're going to look at population and you're going to look at storm surge. I'm going to show you that one, those two together. Um, so if we go back to that map, um, I'm going to turn off the precipitation for now. I'm going to go into the base map and I'm going to look at population. So the darker the color, if I look at the key here, the darker the color, the higher the population. So if I look in here, um, it's going to show me the population of that area that it's impacting. And I believe the question is saying, could this in or could this hurricane impact a lot of people potentially? So look at that, look at what the population is in the area where the hurricane's at, and you can answer that question, okay? And then the last one it asks you to look at is storm surge. So this one I just wanted to show you because if you don't zoom in on the map and just look like this, it's gonna look like there's nothing on there. So let's see if it shows up, there we go. It's gonna look like there's nothing on your map but that is not true. Um, you just have to zoom in. So remember, storm surge is what's happening on land. So you're gonna have to zoom into these areas where the hurricane is, is making landfall or getting, getting close to land. And then you'll be able to see, and remember the different colored dots, we'll leave it zoomed in here and then turn, oh, actually I have to resume, which is okay. Um, and now I can see with my key what areas are being impacted, okay? Um, and then you guys can use that to answer your last two questions.